now on behalf of the EFD group, Mr Farage. Thank you. Well, there's a certain sense of irony here this morning because, of course, this is the week when you were awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Um, this great achievement. I, I thought the award bizarre, particularly as this morning what we're discussing are a new range of measures that will further pile on the agony for those southern Eurozone states. Europe is now split from north to south uh, with increasing violence and enmity between the peoples of the north of Europe and the south of Europe. So um, I don't think the Peace Prize was really very appropriate. Not, of course, that that will pose you a problem tomorrow because there are no leaders in those southern European countries who frankly have got the courage to stand up to the might of Brussels and to challenge the Eurozone project. But what you will have at tomorrow's summit, yet again, is the curious case of Mr Cameron. Because on the one hand, he's a big ally. He resists having a referendum. He publicly states again and again that he wants Britain to remain a member of the European Union. And surprisingly, he has supported every one of your moves towards a fiscal union and a banking union. And Mr Verhofstadt, indeed, uh, called Cameron the greatest federalist outside the Eurozone. And yet, on the other hand, he can't go along with any of this because politically, the financial transaction tax, the banking union, are quite impossible in Britain. But every time there's a summit and the Eurozone moves that little bit further forward, it leaves Britain and it leaves Cameron even more marginalised. In fact, it's barely worth him turning up tomorrow. The great debate in Britain has always been that the single market has been the victory of our membership of the Union and that we have great influence over that single market. Well, increasingly, we're going to be excluded from the key decisions that affect that single market. And given the hostility, and I'm sorry to disappoint my Conservative friends here, but there is hostility now towards Britain in this place. They blame their economic problems on our city of London. Frankly, the argument that the single market benefits Britain and that we have any influence over it is now disappearing. Um, and very shortly, I think, you'll be glad to see the back of us. Lots of blue card uh, requests. But uh, Mr. Gurens was first. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, le discours de Monsieur Farage. Listening to Mr. Farage, I'm prompted to ask the following question. Mr. Farage, from your point of view, the success of reforms undertaken in the euro area, are those also in the interests of the UK, or do they run counter to the UK's interests? The story goes, and Mr. Cameron's story and Mr. Barroso's story and most people here's story is that the euro is something that needs to be saved. And therefore, the more money we throw at it, the more guarantees we put behind it, that's a good thing, because the breakup of the Eurozone would be a very difficult and perhaps perilous course to go down. Uh, I'm afraid that there is a problem with this, that nothing that is being done, whether it's the banking union or the fiscal union, does a single thing to change the problem that there is a massive competitive gap between the German economy and the Mediterranean economies. And if we carry on down this route of saving the Euro, we will finish up in those southern Mediterranean states, probably with violent revolution. And so I would say it's better if we were good Europeans, we would break up the Eurozone and recognise that Greece, Spain and Portugal should never have joined in the first place.